Boom! What up you awesome and beautiful guys? It's Uncle Night Shift and tonight is gonna be a good night because we're gonna take the ugliest tiger in the world and make it into something less horrible with the aid of filters, washes and oil paints. My friends, this might be the most important milestone in this tiger's lifetime because it's gonna transform. It's gonna be the same tiger, but also something more. <laughs> I'll keep some of the explanations more brief, because I wanna focus on a question that nobody asked. Yet, I was always curious about it. How to apply washes and oil paints over the Zimmerit? And before we get this party started, if you haven't seen the previous video where I explain why this model is painted the way it is, here's a quick recap and I'm gonna leave a link in the description in case you'd like to know more. So, just like on the previous model, I decided to use a filter for German camo. But this time I didn't apply it over the entire model. Instead, I only focused on those parts which are in different color. My idea behind this is that since the running gear was an upgrade straight from the factory and it was installed when this tank was repaired, there's a chance it was painted with a different batch of German yellow, which might have looked a little different. And the same goes for the other parts, which didn't come fresh from the assembly line, but were sourced from other tanks. It's a very subtle effect, so it won't make a huge difference, but hey. I think it's okay to start subtle. After all, filters are not only about blending different colors together, they can also be used to create contrast between parts. The next step involves oil paints, although I didn't use this one, but I was able to try the oil expert from VMS for the first time. It's a strange purple fluid which accelerates the oil paints drying time and it also improves their flow while you're blending them. Not gonna lie, it looks kinda odd, but once you mix it all together, it won't affect the color at all. Not even the white. Or any other light color. And yes, I'm gonna use it instead of enamel thinner for blending. This method is the so-called oil dot technique where we apply selected oil paints on the model and then blend them into one messy layer. For this model I decided to go with olive green. Uh, <laughs> dark yellow. <laughs> faded yellow. Faded yellow. Faded yellow and white. <laughs> and then I blended them together with the oil expert, a large soft brush and tapping motion. So they'll create these random clouds over the surface. I also like to work in smaller segments like you see here, so I can be more focused on the task at hand. The technique is almost the same on sloped surfaces, the only difference is the motion. Instead of tapping, I'm dragging the paints up and down. Normally I'd go for a more dramatic effect, but on this model I wanted to keep it subtle. More on that in a second. Blending them over the Zimmerit is more difficult, and here I decided to let them sort of flow into the pattern, so I'm not creating any streaking effects like I normally would on a vertical surface, but more like random stains. Also the reason why I kept this effect more subtle is simply because I wasn't yet completely sure where I wanted to take the weathering. But I already started forming a few ideas during this step. So yeah, if nothing else, blending oil dots over the model can help you understand the surface and colors and how they'll work together. And also the opposite, what's not gonna work. And for the Panzer Grey parts I used white and Panzer Grey. Yeah, I'm completely serious, I actually found an oil paint called Panzer Grey in my stash, thank you very much. Um, 
here I had to take care and avoid spreading the paint over the Timurit and pretty much the rest of the model because these are two distinct surfaces and what works on the grey won't work on the green. Probably the coolest thing about the oil expert is that I just had to leave it all dry overnight and the next morning I could apply the wash without damaging the oil paints. In any other case I'd have to leave them for at least 24 or ideally 48 hours. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. And speaking of wash, I again chose the brown wash for German yellow because I just find it to be one of the most universal washes I have. It works on yellow, green, yellow and green. <laughs> And it's actually gonna work on the Panzer Grey as well. But here's again something interesting. I didn't want to spend too much time on the running gear since it's gonna be mostly covered up with dust and mud tones. But at the same time I don't like to cut corners too much so I just applied the wash in a very generous amount. And then I left it dry for about 15 minutes because it has to be completely dry to the touch for the next step. And then I used a makeup sponge or makeup stick or whatever it is called to wipe the excess away. The makeup thing has a very soft sponge at the end, which is super efficient when it comes to rubbing the paint away. And as a result, the wash will remain only around details. And speaking of results, it actually doesn't look very bad. It's not as crisp as it would be if I take my time and carefully blend it with a paintbrush, but I think it's perfectly okay for what it is. Obviously this is not gonna be the case on the rest of the model. This is where I always want to have full control over the effect, so I prefer to take my time and slowly apply the wash around every small part. If you like adding some extra details on your own, especially something like sculpting your own weld beads. This is the moment where all the extra work is gonna pay off as the wash will flow into the weld texture and make it pop. This is another example where I like to work in smaller sections in order to stay more focused and have more control over the result. So again, as soon as the wash becomes mostly dry to the touch, I will blend the excess with enamel thinner. And yeah. I almost forgot. So before anyone asks the question, no I didn't seal any of those layers with varnish. Like I said, thanks to the oil expert I only had to leave the oil paints dry overnight and the next day I continued with the wash. And I didn't seal that one either. And the next day I continued with another round of oils, but more on that in a moment. I always wondered if one should apply washes over Zimmerit. Since I never painted one before and this is my first time, I only formed my opinion based on what I've seen and read online. The general consensus was that no, wash over Zimmerit bad. It'll make the model extremely dark and the result will be unnatural and exaggerated. But I still wanted to try it out but not the usual way of slapping the wash over the entire surface. So I first tried applying it around details which are protruding from the Zimmerit. Here I found the wash will flow uncontrollably, so I suppose this is not the way. I also wanted to try how it'll look if I applied the wash in a limited and controlled amount into the pattern. So I applied it randomly on those lower sections which were hidden behind the side skirts and as such would collect a lot of dirt from the tracks. I played it safe because if anything would go south I still cover these parts with mud later. But as it turned out the result wasn't bad at all so I added some extra on the remaining portions as well. I guess the point is to keep it random, don't cover every part of the Zimmerit, Make sure the wash is thin, so don't use it straight from the bottle, but add a few drops of enamel thinner. And also, don't be shy to blend it a lot. But hey, those are just my opinions based on my first experience, so yeah, take that for what it is. And as always, the model looks better, but also kinda off at the same time. Because the wash definitely brought up all of the details, 
but the result is just too... I don't know, sterile or immaculate. So, as usual, it's time for a second round of oil paints. In this case, I decided to take it a step further, so I guess we can call this step oil paint rendering. So... I started with the black-brown oil paint, which I used instead of the wash to outline all the details poking out of the Zimmerit. I kept the amount limited, because a little goes a long way. Because the oil paint is thicker than enamel wash, and oil paints generally blend a little better than enamels, the result after blending is much more presentable. I think this is a very good way to create more contrast on these parts, and also, if by any chance it's too much, all the upcoming techniques can tone it down. But personally, I think it looks pretty okay. Next I made a very pale green mixture from olive green and white. I applied it over the green portions of the Zimmerit in a very similar way like the wash before, but in this case I'm not creating any artificial shadows or highlights or anything like that, but instead I'm adding more tones, and as such I'm keeping it random. The next color is pure white. This might seem like an odd choice, but it kind of works in my opinion. Not only we can use white to make the green and dark yellow lighter, but also if we consider the natural color of the Zimmerit, which was a very light tan, it kinda gives it a slightly worn look. Of course, I'm not trying to create the illusion of chipping over the Zimmerit, we'll take care of that in the next episode, Instead, I'm partially preparing the surface for that. The faint white tones will serve as a good base for the more crisp chipping effects, which are gonna reveal the original Zimmerit color. And... I don't know, it's kinda hard to explain, but I really like the effect. And the last color will be dark brown, which I applied very thin. Technically, I applied all of them very thin, but it's very important with the brown, since it's dark, yeah. <laughs> and I'm using it as another layer of wash to suddenly bring out the Zimmerit texture, but again just in a few random places. And not only that, it also makes the surface look more dirty. So just like with the white before, it kinda prepares the Zimmerit for the upcoming effects. The only difference is that in this case it's not for chipping, obviously, but for dust and mud tones. Anyway, I think the most important thing is to keep it subtle, and I mean very subtle. Here you can see the comparison between the section with it and the other one without any rendering or whatever. <laughs> and we can also use those methods on the rest of the tank as well. This is again more like the usual ambient occlusion method, which I keep using all the time. And... I mean, if we think about it, playing this name game makes it all just more confusing. You know, is this ambient occlusion, or is it already oil paint rendering? Um, I guess it's kind of pointless. The only thing that's important are the results. I think, again, opinions. And of course, it can be used not only to make fake shadows, but also highlights. Well, not even that, but we can also add different tones to distinguish details from one another. And also, it's not just about fake shadows, but the effect can also represent the initial dirt passes, hence the name ambient occlusion. All of this makes the model more interesting, but most importantly easier to read, and this means it'll help us form a better idea about the upcoming effects such as chipping, earth tones, and all of those different water and grime stains which we'll make in the upcoming episodes. Fake highlights can be also blended in a more gnarly fashion to enhance the distressing from the previous episode. They're just too many options, but there's always a point where I feel like, like, you know, like, <laughs> like, yeah, this is good enough. And there's nothing more to add. <laughs>
And speaking of which, the next episode won't be just about my usual chipping, but there will be some other interesting effects such as remnants of the Zimmerit coat, and I think I'll also enhance those hairspray chips which I made a week ago, because... Because I feel like the oil paints kinda toned them down. Anyway, I think that'll do for tonight. Like I said, there are so many things we can do with oil paints and theoretically I'd be able to weather this model completely with them. But that's not exactly my style. I just like to make my life more complicated for no reason, I guess. But at the same time, I gotta say I'm starting to like where this model is going. And I hope you are starting to enjoy the result a little bit more as well. I mean, if you didn't give up on me after the previous episode, you know, seeing a tiger painted like this feels just off, <laughs> I know. But, you know, I don't want to repeat myself all the time, but it's just how it was most likely painted. Yeah. So, if you enjoyed this episode and didn't unsubscribe already, then let me know by giving it a like and leaving a comment. Also, a big thank you to my patrons who keep this channel going forward. If you'd like to get more content like almost daily blog style photo updates from my workbench, one week early ad free videos, high quality full resolution pictures, and let's not forget the option to chat with me through DMs about anything and everything, then consider checking it out, starting at $1 a month. And also, it seems like there's another tiger happening over at Panzermeister's channel, so if you didn't have enough tigers for one day, I guess you should check it out, link down below. Anyway, that's all I've got for tonight, so I hope I'll see you again in the next episode about chipping, rust effects and the other tasty stuff, and thanks again for watching and I'll see you mates the next week. And here are some bloopers. The next step involves oil paints, although I didn't use this one, but... <laughs> And it also improves their flow while you're... Blah.